Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a full length movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman. Let's watch a Hi! This is Carl. I wrote this song. My turn-ons are satin sheets. I love to be outdoors. Follow me on Twitter. Jokes to call. The French duh, not the duh duh. Let's watch a full-length Welcome to Let's Watch a Full Length Movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. Carl, how are you today? All right, good. I like the yelling in that song. It's very punk rock. It feels very cathartic. Oh, it's very punk rock. It sounds like uh, <laughs> you have a banjo. Yeah. What's your definition of punk rock? Uh, I guess it's Jello Biafra with the banjo. I met Jello Biafra. Really? Yeah. We were in a show together where I was doing a bit one day and he was doing the same bit the other day and we went in to rehearse. Very charming gentleman. Really? Yeah, my moment wow, of fame. that's great. Yeah. That is we're friends so now. Cool. Uh, that, really? No. Welcome that's to great. the show. Uh, we are broadcasting this live on May 9th, 10th? May Mother's 12th. Day. It's Mother's Day. Last, last year we didn't have a show because we were good, right? We needed to attend a mother thing. That's true. Right. But this time, you know, mothers be Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, we are going to watch a full-length movie on YouTube. These are movies I've read about and I've always wanted to see, and now they're on YouTube. And they're never that good, other people say. <laughs> Carl, what's the movie today? Well, they're today? chosen by you. <laughs> All right. Let's play the theme. Uh, what is the uh, movie we're going to watch? Okay. Today we're going to watch... A house is not a home. A house is not a home, 1964. That's what you put into the YouTube search bar. A house okay. is not a home, 1964. All right. The publisher that I like is Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson? You like Chris yeah. Johnson? Oops. All right. So Easy what to say, right? Usually it's not. Okay, so Chris Johnson, I just hit the link and then I hit pause and I moved it back to yeah. zero, zero. And we want you to do the same. We want you to listen to the podcast and watch the movie at the same time. If you want to watch the movie beforehand, like Carl, how many times have you seen this movie so far? This time, only two times. I'm very light on the research this week, too. I'll still do my best. I actually have some research, too, and because the reason why I heard about this movie is that a popular cartoon series came out, book cartoon books came out based on this woman. Oh, interesting. And well, that were, must have been a little risque. They were illustrated by Sergio Argonis from Mad Magazine. Oh, really? Because yeah. he did cartoony things. This is from 1965. Okay. So we'll talk about that during this hour and a half long movie, but we would like to get the countdown going, and here in the studio... Is countdown the, king. The countdown king himself. <laughs> the master of the descending numerals. Let's get ready to Brumba. Paul Let's Brumba. Get... Paul Brumba. What's happening, boys and girls? You guys know the drill. We're ready for this thing. A house is not a home. Put that finger right over that triangle and do it in three, two, one. Play. Gone. A chair is still a chair. This is Bert Bacharach. Oh. Now, I know Luther Vandross did a cover of this song. Well, he had a song yeah. called The yeah, House is Not a Home. And it, it's, every, it, no, it, it, you're right. It is this song. Oh. And it's a standard nowadays. It gets covered all the time. Now, this is about prostitution and a bordello, this song. Yeah, well, this, this uh, no, I don't know about the song. The song's about. Like, what kind of love, house are they but, talking about? Mickey Mouse's a Clubhouse? Brothel. Yeah. <laughs> and if you notice, this is one of those credits where they show you the memoirs in the opening credits, as if to say, mm -hmm. here's the movie version of the popular book. Right, exactly right. So, this the reason I said no is because it's more about a person who became a madam and was the most successful madam in Manhattan, 
And huh. he wrote a book 10 years earlier, maybe it's 11 years earlier, 1953. Um, and that's what this is. But you know, with the censor board and everything, we're going to see a not so honest movie. It's going to have all the elements of bad, but okay. all nicey nice. They're going to be all nice and nice. So they kind of polished the rough edges of the uh, brothel scene. <laughs> yeah, polished. Yeah. Yeah, polished. It's Disney version. You know, oh, it's, they charge extra for heroin. the polish. Really? We'll see heroin in this. Yeah, but we're going to see the nicest heroin you ever met. Polly? We're going to see suicide <laughs> in this movie. Really? But it was a, yeah, but it was a nice suicide. We're going to see rape. Oh, that was really? Nice, though. That, that was nice. nice. But it's definitely uh, polished. Uh, I might as well bring up, so it's Sergio Leone's, Polly Anderson, they, I, I'll bring it out, but I'll read some of the panels. They're like panel gags. And mm-hmm. it plays off the fat costumes. Edith Head? Edith Head did a prostitution movie? <laughs> Yes, yeah. actually, she was nominated. She didn't win. Nominated for an Oscar for her costume in this uh, movie, and that's that's the only recognition this film got a, a nomination for costume. For costumes, yeah, nice lingerie. Yeah. <laughs> now I have to admit, like I, I have a not a beef, but this idea of like you look at people like Polly or Heidi Fleiss or uh, yeah. Larry Flint or Hugh Hefner, and you say these guys built an empire, but they literally built mm-hmm. it off the backs of other people who don't make money off of this. You know what who I mean? Do not make yes. Who are paid like what's analogous to an hourly wage, like right. You know, at the end of the week, here you go. Here's a little bit. So when you go into a hustler uh, club, a hustler casino, and you're like, wow, what an empire. It was literally built on women posing for one-time fee. So Yeah, that's right. Here you go, honey, $1,200. Yeah. Click, click, click. Really? You're right. It's exploitation. So, yeah, so when they have these empires and you got to be proud of, like, Heidi, uh, Polly, and how much she did, or Heidi, or Mm -hmm. how Hugh Mm -hmm. Hefner's empire grew, it was literally based on some cheap photos that one time purchased, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, but that's America. (laughs) And that's what this movie's about, right? The capitalism unbridled? Well, uh, no. This, I mean, that is a truism about this world, but this, this movie is really about. Poor Polly Adler, who stumbled into um, the becoming brothel. a madam. It was like thrust upon her. I'll say. And she, so the whole thing is like, I couldn't get out of the business. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> uh, I'm like That's that. what this whole movie is. Like, this is a crappy business. And it, yeah, every time I try to get out, they suck me back. So there's Shirley Winters. God bless her. I love Shirley Winters. Yeah, yeah. She did a lot she of. She does a. <clears throat> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you first. She does a very average job of acting in this movie. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's just overly dramatic. But she would go on to do The Greatest Story Ever Told in Alfie, right? Yeah. 1966. And she'll do A Patch of Blue, in which she wins a second Oscar. So it's like. This was just a bump in her career. But she also did a Roger Corman movie, right? Like, uh, around that time, too. So, I mean, she's she's just, you know, she takes what she can. I guess that's what it was. She was a hit, and she was running with it. But she, but I'm saying, like, even though it's a bad film, she had good films this year, a year later. She's good, Shelley yeah. Winters. So, I like her. Uh, yeah. She played the mom in Jury Duty, the Polly yeah. Shore's mom. Right, that's right. With Charles and Napier. she is, um, um, she plays the grandmother on Roseanne. Last right. episode, we had the mother, remember? Yeah. So for Mother's Day, we're watching this. I for the uh, plot point. Yeah, please. This is, this is sort of the birth of Polly, and that 36-year-old woman we're looking at right there, she's uh-huh. like 16. <laughs> okay. Oh, she's working at the Triangle Shirt Factory? Bad. Right. Uh, I have the bad news about that. <laughs> So, that so, was a hot joint. <laughs> yeah, for, man. for about six hours, it was. Um, so it's a sweatshop, and the foreman, that guy right there, Mr. Hanson, yeah. is going to ask her on a date. That's not really his and real then, name, is it? Mr.? Well, I think they had stage names back then. You're right, but we know him as Mr. Hanson, and he's going to ask her on a date, and then <laughs> the Mike Spiegelman obligatory... Uh-oh. Connection. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's going to happen. So as you know, and if as you're... a result of that, she gets kicked out of her house. It's like blamed on her like it was her fault. 
terrible. What Carl is alluding to is that every movie we watch, there's usually a, a rape scene in it, and so that's what you should be prepared for, and uh, or a Star Trek reference. Uh, anyone, yeah. anyone, the actors are in Star Trek. I know Cesar Romero is yeah. in this. Yes, but he was. He's not the one. Of course, you know he's from that. From he's Batman the Joker. As, yeah. The Joker with but, a mustache. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> How could that not right. creep people out that they put like white yeah. powder over his mustache? Yeah, that's right. Over, that's right. He, you can't paint. Apparently, you could face paint hair. Yeah. No, well, he didn't want to shave it. That's the famous story. Oh, uh, I see. I see. Uh, so, hmm. I just want to mention Fanny Hillerman. She wrote uh, the memoir that this movie is based on. And then a year later in 65, Sergio Leone did a Fanny Hillerman Memoirs of a Jewish Madam. And these are like panel gags. And then the second. I got to interrupt you. Yeah, please. See what she's doing? Oh, did you miss it? She yeah. She sort of did a dance. They'll. Oh, darn. Oh, they were okay, dancing. Throughout the whole movie, they're going to ask her to do, pretend, do an impression of this uh, famous star. Jewish star? Yes, a six-pointed. You know what? Since the moment passed, you go on about, uh, and I'll uh, oh. find my notes here. Okay, because I mean, it's the reason why she's famous is because she's Jewish. Well, I also like yeah. a famous madam. Uh, all right, so. Um, but she was successful, tremendously successful. Yeah. That's what made her famous. You're talking about Polly Adler, right? Polly Adler, yeah. So this cartoon book was called Memoirs of a Jewish Madam, and the first volume is rife with Jewish references. When Hillman tells a well-endowed member of her staff, Mr. Shapiro wants to see you, Monique. Tonight she feels like having dairy. It's a reference to the Jewish laws of keeping kosher, which includes separating meat and dairy. Right. Uh, yeah. And then the second book was also released in 65, Fanny Hillman in Washington. So her name is Fanny, but in this movie it's Polly, uh -huh. right? No, her no the the real life person Polly Adler is right. the uh, yeah that's who she plays. Okay, but I thought her name is Polly in this movie. Her name's Polly. Mm -hmm. Tonight, well here, sit down, help yourself. So what's happening here is she's right, innocently bumping into prostitutes, and I'm she's learning that there trouble. is such a world as that. Huh? <laughs> she's Thanks. on her date with the manager of the sweatshop. You know, and they're laughing at her because she's putting on makeup wrong. <laughs> I, I guess I should have mentioned I never used this stuff before. Yeah, you keep that up. Mike, you this is what I wanted to like tell you. Like, yeah. right now, she's meeting prostitutes and learning how to make up kind of sexy, sexy. But it's the nicest, nicest thing. They're like, hi, what's your name? Please have a seat. Oh, you didn't bring any makeup? Have some of mine. They're like, nicey, nice. See? Please to meet you, girl. Please to meet you. Here's my card. So they're like the pretty women of prostitutes. Like you've seen that movie, Pretty Woman? Yeah. And he's like, what are you doing in the bathroom? She's like, I'm flossing my teeth. He's like, oh, phew. <laughs> I love when they stand up. Hope we see you again, Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Everything's great in this nice world of prostitution. I know. I know. I like this music. It's, they must have took it barred from Walt Disney. Yeah. Okay, so there's a woman named Rita Barrett or Nita Bear or something like that. And she was, I guess, a famous woman who acted posh. So every now and then they say, do your Rita Bear? Nice, huh? You know, and she starts acting, you know, walking around all like snobby. And anyway, you'll see it several times throughout the film. It, it's how the film opened and it will be how it ends. First time when I speak, first drink. All right, cool. Drop the innocent stuff, huh? So now I, you see his hands and what he wants to do. Uh, those hands are free Roman hands. Well, yeah, but they were going for... Okay, so I guess you don't know this, but it, it was rumored that Polly Adler, when you squeezed her boobs, it would honk. You're gonna make me work for really? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I think I saw so that. He's trying right now. Honk, honk. Please. Uh Yeesh. Oh yeah, you should not only mute, you should like turn your head because it's a, she's going to run away, he's going to be in the bushes, it's graphic. No, don't turn up the sound. 
No, no. Mike, don't. All right. You get so sensitive. <laughs> all right, don't all right. subject yourself. All right. I turn, the, I turn the sound off. Okay. Now, face the um, that yeah. window where you look out into the street. Uh-huh. Yeah. And don't watch this because it's not nice. All right. It's really bad. Uh, should I play a uh, breaker from the station? Ba, okay. Ba, it's ba, over. Ba, it's ba, over. Ba. So the second now called, she comes home, yeah. and it's very unfair. They're like, they blame her, like, Look at your clothes. and they kick her out. What's on your face? Yeesh. Yeah. Where was she Not staying, her parents? Uh, no, she came from Europe. I think it was Poland, and she came at an extremely young age, and it's like uncle and aunt, something like that. Huh. Another kicking around. This is how I've been spending every night at the library. Look at her, nothing but a trend. The hard-working one who only wanted an education, huh? Jeez. Yeah. Well, I guess this is... Let me wrap up real quick. So the second book was called Fanny Hillman in Washington, and then there was Fanny Hillman on campus. But then okay. the fourth book was called Fanny Hillman Goes Ape, Memoirs of a Monkey Madam. And what it was was... <laughs> instead of the book is... Uh, all right, it goes, uh, doing away with the Argonian's art form, uh, the interiors, and most of the Judaism, and all of the homo sapiens. Instead, the book is page after page of black and white photos of monkeys, chimps, and apes with dialogue captions, turning them into simian prostitutes and johns. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what it dissolved into. And there were other uh, books based on her. Called How to Be a Jewish Madam was the one that was published outside of that. Uh, and they're all unauthorized. So I have a couple of these these gag panels. I'll read them during uh, the the show. Okay. Like she uh, never brought up that she's Jewish. Really, that's the whole thing about her is that she was Jewish. It's, it's a nice city, nice movie. Huh. Okay, so you remember I said my research was lacking. Yeah. Well, there's a guy whose face we know, and I don't know who he is. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Is this guy? He looks like Shemp. He looks like Mo and Larry. He does look like Shemp, right? Yeah. <laughs> he got, right now, he's like, Say, boss, is the guy here to see you, Connor? Wow, oh. that's a really good curly. You see the guy in the middle there? He's Larry. I Larry Fine. <laughs> yeah, Larry. He's always in the middle. Is he Larry Fine? Yeah. I've seen his face before, but I, I should be telling you right now what films he was in, what television show we recognize him from. Let's see if we hear his voice. Would you see that girl, my friend? Polly Adler, she's got Yeah, that guy giving the one too. Adler, my district. Well, she's from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. That explains the uh, artisanal bread <laughs> and the shitty mustache. Artisan. If you don't help her, artisan. Artisan. What did I say, artisan? Thank you. You what said artisan. Where you live? Artisanal. You know what I put her, Mr. Rafferty. My wife it is medicinal. Artisanal. I'm lucky I can put her up. I don't recognize that guy from shit. Oh, the guy in the center? Oh, maybe. Well, fair. That's why I'm apologizing, because he's... Okay, the guy to the left, his name is Robert Taylor, and it's his, sort of like a career in decline. He was like a movie star, a lot of 30s stuff, but he is going to help out Polly, and huh. he becomes the whorehouse backer in the, you know, as this goes on. Oh, good for so, him. He looks so right glum. Right now, it's like... Here's a woman who's been kicked out of your house. He's like a local Somebody politician, like a sem the guy in the center, like a assemblyman or something. And it's like, this, she's got nowhere to stay. She's out on the street. She's not even from my district. So now, nice Robert Taylor, who's Frank Costage. Costigan, Costigan. He's like a gang, gang, uh, gangster. He's going to help her. Here you go. English? <laughs> I got a place just off Third Avenue. Only use it now and then. She's welcome till she gets Very a job. Girl. She gets out a few hours. You know, I actually have a place on Third Avenue. I don't use it if you guys want to uh -huh. hang out. Yeah, I got a couple cool. apartments yeah, that I don't use. That's I pay cool. 6000 a month for it, too. I don't know. I should use it. You said it's Third Avenue? Yeah, Third Avenue. Right, which sounds swank until we find out, yeah, in Yonkers. <laughs> Third, uh, it's in New York, West New York, New Jersey. Yeah, it's a Park City, Park Avenue address in West New York. <laughs> we talked about West New York. West New York has the same grid system as New York, right? It's a, it, the streets it's match a very, up. Yeah, 
right. I've been there once in the 80s. It was a weird town. You can see the city from it, and they are west of New York. It's not an inappropriate name. Okay, so here we have Frank's uh, apartment because he has so much money that he can have a little place. Yeah, that's and the, he basically. That's, that's my place. <laughs> on Third Ave. Yeah, I never use it. So he has a girlfriend. He's cheating on his wife, you know, and she comes around. So Polly's allowed to stay there as long as when he's going to bang his girl, she makes herself scarce. And that's what she's doing right now. I gotcha. So he puts a tie on the doorknob outside to let her know. (laughs) It's very strict. Be back at 10. (laughs) Not a minute earlier. I'll be done by then. Oh, let's hear the music. That looks like police woman. The one oh. who was in uh, Dirty Harry, the one who was stalked. Angie, uh, Angie uh, what's her name? Yeah, not yeah. Angie. Um, was it police woman? Like she was the, there, was the, uh, t- there was the two women who were pairs. They were, they were partners. Huh. Yeah. Angie Dickinson was police woman. Right, right. So it's not her. Uh, it's... Uh, I don't think I've seen the only time I really knew about it I was on the circle line you know the the ferry that goes oh, around yeah. and right. the guy was pointing out where they shot a uh, police woman and Maybe I Cagney and Leaf and I said Cagney well and... what the fuck's police woman this show hasn't been on for years why are you mm-hmm. bringing up police you know and over I guess here that's all they had yeah they shot bosom buddies wow <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, what, bosom buddy? Yeah. <laughs> um, Cagney and Lacey, was that it? Oh, yeah, with uh, Tyne Daly and... Uh, is that yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what she looks like to me. Yeah, she was in the Dirty Harry movies. Right, right. Yeah. She was the partner and she gets killed. Does she? Spoiler! I thought she say, got saved. No, they all die. Maybe in the way end she did get because that's the way movies work. But during the Dirty Harry film that she was in... The Enforcer? She did something self-sacrificing huh. so that he could get the criminal. That now, weren't the criminals... The criminals in that movie were the cops themselves, right? The San Francisco Police Department had this, like, weird vigilante. Nazi vigilante group within... Right. The, the system is killing us. I mean, it's just letting criminals walk the street. Right. So we're going to be judge and jury. Yeah. We're going to be... Uh, yeah. Judge, jury, and execution here. Right, right, right. That's a lot to do, man. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much an underachiever. I mean, I could be an executioner, but I don't know about the judge and jury part. It seems like a lot of work. Right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you want me to kill something? Okay, so this is the jerk who Gets her, into- her, and she escaped from him. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, she didn't go back to the sweatshop. Now she's got a lot of money and a... Nice part. Okay, so this guy who's like a trumpet player or something, a sax player, something like that, yeah. is like stepping in for no reason and saving Polly. Wow, he's a good fighter too. He block counter counter block. Yep. A combo. Uh-oh, oh, he's, no, got he's got a lamp. Got a thing. He's got a thing. Oh. He's got an he's, oversized ashtray. ashtray. Yeah, yeah, a stand-up ashtray. Yeah, it's a weird club. This doesn't even look like a club. This looks like just some guy's bedroom. <laughs> Hey, what do you talk here? What's the idea, big thing? <laughs> now, this movie was 1965, but it was still shot in black and white. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. It's it's 64. Okay. Yeah. It's still shot in black and white, and they think the internet suspects that was done by the director, who's a nobody, by the way, done by the director to give us the impression that it's 1910, 1920s, 1930s. That's when Polly Adler was active. You see. But all their hairstyles and their clothes and everything, it's 1964. Right. It's ridiculous. Oh, right. Oh, so you're saying that she works in like a triangle sweatshop, which we see at the turn of the century, but everyone's wearing 60s fashion. Yeah, especially their hairstyles. Yeah. Well, that's a very elaborate hair. That, I mean, that poodle must have taken like... (laughs) It's a (laughs) quaff. Talk about Hollywood dogs that drink that hair. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Good opening. Yeah. All right, you got a fresh one. You got a fresh one. 
I mean, no. we got Lassie, we got Beethoven. We did the, yeah. We got Brady's. The Brady. Yeah, the Brady Sock Tiger. We did Eddie. Well, you know, the Eddie from Frasier, he would drink because he ate so many uh, popper. He used to be into crank. And uh-huh. uh, he, could, he wouldn't even notice the alcohol he would consume. Very active uh-huh. dog. In fact, he uh, the only role he can get after Frasier was the uh, the artist, the movie about the silent movie where he he mm-hmm. performed. That was his last role. All right. And right. their producers were grateful it was a silent movie because if you listen to the audio, you hear the dog like I'm in pain. My life is not what it turned <laughs> out to be. It's constantly throughout the audio. What a drag. What a drag. Okay, so now uh, Polly's showing off how good she's got it to the to the prostitutes from the dance hall saying i've got my own place here frank i don't sleep with frank costigan the gang gangster i don't have to uh-huh. he goes so is this a funny joke in here he goes i don't sleep with frank he's a nice guy and then the one on the right goes so what nice guys sleep with girls <laughs> did you get it i know but the music indicated it was a joke um, so no, I got Frank it. Frank wouldn't it. do that. He's Sorry, a nice him. guy. And then she goes, arranged. nice guy sleep with girls. Yeah. I, I think she looks more like Penny Marshall. Not Penny Marshall. Cindy Williams than uh, Tyne uh-huh. Daly. Okay. But, no, 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 no. That woman is gone now. All right. Won't, that was a woman from the sweatshop. We won't see her again until the end of the film. No more brunettes. This? <laughs> Just blonde. <laughs> uh, okay. Cagney and Lacey Lady, she's gone, and she won't be back. But she, until the way in. Okay, so Frank there, like we said, he was using that apartment to cheat on his wife. So right. now they broke up. So Polly's like, let me introduce you to this dance hall girl. And so Frank is now, what it feels like to Frank is he's buying himself a prostitute. He's now, Polly now John. Is innocent. Oh, so she doesn't realize the transaction is occurring. Mm-hmm. Ooh, look, they got booze yeah. in there. Is this yeah. like the prohibition all of a sudden? Uh, you can't bring I outside don't... alcohol. They're in a I restaurant, and he's pouring a flask in there. I don't know there. the answer. Well, maybe they're just at a pizzeria where they don't serve booze, and that's why he has to pour a hard alcohol into the soda. <laughs> uh, look at the ashtray in the center of the table. <laughs> Smoke if you want. So they did the eyeball thing, so they're going to get it on. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Now she's coming home and she's saying, Frank, like, you know, she knows they're going to do the deed. The deed, the deed. <laughs> Fred okay, Woody. so here comes Shirley Williams or whatever you said. No, no, Cindy Williams was the, the brunette from the from the Triangle store, uh, such up. Gotcha. Oh, okay, here's the so, money. Right. She goes... Yeah. Frank told me to buy something nice for myself, and I think you should have a cut of it. Polly's like, wow. what? Me? That, this is more than two weeks' say You are absolutely it? correct that this is scrubbed to a T. That's not how it works. <laughs> you know, I just did this deed, and I just want to give you a cut. Really? That's how it works? <laughs> <laughs> not now, same. Polly doesn't feel tainted. She feels... Okay. It's very obvious sometimes that they're reading from the book. Right. But even though the movie doesn't live up to it. So it's saying that the only crime in the 30s was to be a person who was poor, you know, and so she's just happy to get money. Okay, somewhere hiding in here is Raquel Welch. All right. It's her first film ever. Which, yeah. All right, let's see if we can find Raquel Welch. Now, here again, they said, do you read a Barnett or need a bear, whatever it is? Everyone thinks it's so funny. She's vamping around. Oh, now, no. what? He's going to throw that cake. Frosted cake. Yeah. Uh-huh. And he goes to, like, Jackie Gleason. Hey, Jackie. <laughs> the great one. Rip. What an actor. Uh, they didn't have How to. How will Polly react? Is she humiliated? That's extra. Frosting is extra. This is pretty surreal. (laughs) 
Okay, now here's a funny joke. They're all, right. all betting, and it sort of looks like roulette. They're all saying numbers. 38, 39. All right. What are they betting on? So we think on? it's roulette, and we'll find out what they're betting on. All right, I can't wait. It's better be a good joke. He goes, Come on, Red. you, you, you're not. Wow, Red's You're gorgeous. not Raquel Wells. Come here. The winner is 39. Wow. 39, I'll say. They measured her. You got on under that dress. Don't talk to Haven't people who aren't watching the movie. Oh, yeah, you and have to be watching the movie. Doing. Right. Yeah, Pause I can't that. make reference to the fact that they were measuring her breasts and betting on it. You better not say that they were betting on the size of her bust because they should be watching at home. Yeah, well, that's what you're missing out. What a great scene. So anyway, I cannot find Raquel Welch, and I think it's because the, the print is so bad. You know what I mean? Like, they all just look like There's girls. a dozen girls, women, in this scene. And so one of them is Raquel Welch from 1964. Right. Uh, who, who's to say? Before she got triple famous. Well, what was her big movie? One Million B.C.? Or, um... uh, okay. Okay, yes, you're right. But, see, it wasn't really what's her big movie. It was what was her big poster. You know, right. Uh, right? Just like Farrah Fawcett Major. Uh, Farrah okay. Fawcett Major. You are old school, my friend. Did I say that wrong? What no, is it Farrah Fawcett? She was Farrah Fawcett, Fawcett Major. Fawcett. Fawcett. She was Farrah Fawcett Major when she was married to Lee Majors. Right, 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 right. Which was okay. like, you know, it's been a while. <laughs> okay, so she first got noticed when she did this movie called Fantastic Voyage in 1966. Right. But in 1966, she also did 1 million BC, like you said. She only had three lines of dialogue, but she was in this, like, dose, there was this doe skin bikini poster. Like, yeah, the, the movie poster. On the screen now, you see Polly again going, duh, I'm getting money, Guys duh. are giving me a little bit off the top. It's all yours. So you earned it. <laughs> what does she do? Well, yeah, she has such a look like, what's this? Why'd you give me money? Yeah. That's me when it payday. You really pay me for my work? <laughs> so she became an international sex symbol off of that poster, just like Farrah Fawcett. Farrah Fawcett, did. yeah. And she was in Bedazzled. You and I are a fan of that film, 1967. Well, you know the story, too. They wanted to call the movie Raquel Welch, so it would say Dudley Moore and Peter Cook in... Raquel Wells. <laughs> oh, in her. In. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so right now, um, they're saying prostitutes can't just go to stores, and they can't thing. afford... Oh, I'm not sure what they're saying, but this is a bunch of hot the merchandise. That I sell, you only find in the best shops in town. Tell me what you yeah, want. Yeah, Frederick's of Hollywood. Nobody beats my prices, and you know nobody gives better service. Uh, Charlie, wait a minute. Just one question. Uh, is this stuff hot? Now, what kind of a question is that? Of course the stuff isn't hot. But with that particular garment, I wouldn't walk into Sex Fifth Avenue. <laughs> oh, he was saying one thing, but he meant the other. So, so once again, we see Polly going, huh, wait, is this stolen? Like she's losing her innocence every step of the way. Right. But this is all presented to her. She didn't approach it. She, That's right. Yeah. Now she knows that. She can get money for whoring out women and buy stolen clothes. Like every now, is that Raquel Welch there on the right? It could Whoa, be. Maybe. They are just glamorous. I'm Look glad at they. The husband. Husband's like, I can't help it. My my erection knocked me off the table. Whoa! Whoa. Look at this <laughs> wife. Whoa. Ah. Gave him a bath. And the thing is, he's going to stay there for the rest of the night with his pants, wet pants. You don't pants. need to play the music because you know what it is. Ba -ba 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 a trumpet player from the non -paran. Now, do you remember the guy who rescued? Sure, that was like two minutes ago. Yeah, well, yeah. there he is. He's not a new club. You know, these nightclub scenes I love because I haven't never been to a nightclub. Have you ever been to a nightclub with a big band and people were playing and you're having dinner and there's always... No. <laughs> okay, that came past us, Mike. I mean, I've been to one of those, like, new wavy punky clubs in the city. You know what I mean? Like, that got replaced by... 
when you and I were growing up, there yeah. was no such place like that. There must have been something. Like he's oh, he's singing through the uh, megaphone. Is it, right, it's like 1910, and they don't have uh, electricity, micro, electric, hot microphones. Right. So they got to do the you got to crew through your mouth, side of your mouth, into a right, yeah, a cone, whatever it's called. Yeah, I don't think there was ever like I see movies like Bullhorn? we watch Bullhorn. Yeah, yeah. We've watched movies in the 60s where they go to these dinner nightclubs and there must have been a certain point where it just phased out. Like you don't go and you sit there and you watch someone sing while you eat and you watch other people and then you go dance. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I have a – I don't know if it's true, but I have a suspicion, okay? Uh-huh. Do you remember when we were growing up in the 80s, we'd go to a movie like Terminator or something sure. and you would see that nightclub. You know what I mean? The nightclub that didn't really exist in our real world. Right, but it was supposed to be a current nightclub. Right, so it would have like neon stripes, stripes, and uh, what looks like graffiti, and people looking all new wave punked out. I think I know where you're going with this. Pumping. So you think like it wasn't a real play? It was like a simulation of it. It was like a Hollywood version of what was going on. Right, you would see strobe lights and like I might, I don't strongly suspect, but I think it's very, very possible. That there might have been a place called Casablanca, but these nightclubs we see in the in the movies of the '40s might have been a little trumped up. Yeah, I hear you. So you're saying Skate Town USA was Scott Bayo? There wasn't really a roller rink like that back in '79. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I hear right. what you're saying because I love like watching hippie movies, and then when I watch like movies about punk rockers, I go, "That's not what punk rockers look like," you know, a raver, right? Or, or even yeah. now when you watch movies where they have these millennials like, and they're all quaffed and everything, and it's like, well, that's not really how the kids of today are like. But you're right; it's yeah. that version, and then that's the artifact that remains for the next generation to make a reference to. To look back at it, I think, was real because it was documented, they feel. It's like um, Hollywood takes all the things of our culture, but then they pull them together in this great, uh, oh, plot point, sorry, plot point. Okay, here we go. The The guy on the left, I should be telling you right now what movie he was in, but I don't remember. Isn't that the other thing? You mentioned there's someone from I Dream of Genie on this movie. Yeah, he's coming, he's coming. All right, all right, we'll wait for him. He's very Oh, he's I know saying, that guy. Yeah, he's a character actor and stuff. This happens to he, he's the usually pissed off or sighing in his out. hand. That's right. He's usually the authority figure and he's, he's flabbergasted. <laughs> right? Or he's the audacity. Oh, look at that. There he goes. That's what we're talking about. He's, he's putting his handkerchief to his brow. <laughs> oh, they were the strict. So he's a low-level politician, but not so low-level. And, uh, you know, Frank is needling him that he's got this low-level position. But he says, look, Lucky Luciano wants to meet with so-and-so politician, and I know you could pull that together. So this guy's like, oh, I don't know, I'm scared. That's very risky. Such-and-such politician can't be seen with Lucky Luciano. And he's like, hey. I know you, you're a character actor. I'll just throw money at you. And he goes, money, you say? Hmm. Uh, here but, we go. Mike, the thing is, where can they meet? They can't meet at the grocery. They can't meet in broad daylight. They can't meet at a restaurant. You're saying they should meet at Polly's so, place. That's great thinking, Mike. Yeah, listen, we don't want to, we're doing something illicit and we don't want the public to know. Let's go to Polly's mm-hmm. Bordello. Because <laughs> the thing is, Nobody in there is going to claim that they are a witness to anything. It's a place you're not supposed to be. Right. Oh, all right. Yeah, right, because it doesn't exist. Right. Look at that. He's doing some great handkerchief work. Uh, he has a cold. That was the whole comedic bit of that uh, scene. Okay, Raquel Welch should be in here. She might have a cup of coffee. Uh, that her profession is temporary. Uh, is that her on the, maybe in the middle. The yeah, maybe in the middle. Oh, whoa. Do. They're all. That could have been her too. It's hard to see. They're all glamorous. Yeah, the thing is, the morning of a bordello, you know, they're not all made up in, in, you know what I mean. They're not wearing look. like they're they're wearing their morning lingerie. Yeah, yeah, what they would they would have just rolled out of bed. Their hair's terrible. Nobody has makeup. So they live in the bordello. Sure. Is that is that how it goes? When you go to a bordello, yeah. do, they, do they like live in there? Yeah. When was the last time you went to a bordello? 
Uh, whew, gosh, what day is it? Uh, <laughs> Today is Sunday. It's Mother's Day. Sunday. So, yeah. Okay. That's right. I had to leave early to get that gift. So that was Wednesday. Oh, yeah. So what's happening here is Polly saw that guy singing through his megaphone, and he said, that guy did me a big favor once. Why don't we do him a favor, Frank, because you're a gangster and connected. Put him in the so-and-so traveling band. I don't know. So he's <laughs> calling up Polly to say thank you. What do I owe this to? And she goes, I'm fate, remember? Oh, did I tell you that part? Uh, no, but it's good to hear. When really... he defended her from that rapist guy, he right. got fired. And so he said to Polly, don't worry about it. You're fate. You're fate. It goes, fate? Yeah. There had to be a reason I got fired from this crummy band and went on to a better one. Oh. So right now she goes, I'm fate. And he goes, that explains it. He's like, thank you, St. Jude, St. Jude of prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> right now, he does not know that she's a madam. Oh. She just, he just found out that somebody got him a job, called up to thank him. It's fate. Now he's like, let's go on a date. And she's like, no, 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 resist, resist, resist. <laughs> And then he's like, you can't resist if I ask you a third time. And she goes, oh, you, you got me. That third time I have to say yes. So that's it. They're out on the right, They're on a date. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Oh, they're watching a box. There's another thing. Like they yeah. boxing and nightclubs. Yeah. You remember that, uh, uh, that 1930s one we saw? Uh, and they were boxing at a garden party. Yeah, that was fucking great. Oh, that was um, uh, something of the gods, right? The one. No, no, no. that was um, Twilight. Not Twilight of the Gods. It was a different one. Yeah, I remember that. It was very weird. It's the one in which she goes to the gambling casino and they they suck her in. Oh right, right, right. Yeah. And then they trap her. It's like lives of crap or something. Remember. That was in the Lenny Bruce movie. Nope, nope. That was Dance Hall Fever, Dance Hall Racket. Dance Hall, Dance Hall Racket. Racket. Yeah, that's I enjoyed a, that piece of crap, man. That Lenny Bruce movie was great. And that, you see, you talk about it. When I hear of Dance Halls, I immediately think of that movie. Like, that's mm -hmm. how I imagine it, is, the, is their <laughs> version of it. And it might be completely off. But I think, actually, it probably is closer to what a real dance hall was. Well, we saw Polly go to three dance clubs so far in this movie. So there's many examples to choose from. And do you think people wore their tuxedos? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, let's talk about that for a second, right? Right. <clears throat> I don't think it was a Hollywood fake thing in the 30s when people would be in tuxes and they'd go to a place that had, um, like, the, the gambling. I think those were real places. Or to a place that had, um, I don't know, it was very common, everyone was in, in a suit, but it was very common to wear a tuxedo because you're always in a suit, it's not dressy. Yeah. The tuxedo was dressing up. Oh, I see what you say. So to sing, for us, it would be like a new, a clean t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For millennials. Oh, no, like for anyone. There was, a, there was a certain not point sweat. where everybody in the street had a suit to everybody's wearing a Nike shirt. You know what I mean? Like yeah. something happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm okay with okay. that. They're basically falling in love right now. She's not hiding anything like saying I'm a madam. It's just that they're on a date. That's all. Mm -hmm. Polly, all you talk about are your girls. Yeah. You're on a you date. You have a lot of daughters. You have a lot of daughters. I take off my coat, open my collar, sit in front of the mirror then I look at myself and I worry I say to myself Casey you don't hold a job long you've got no bank account you don't give a damn about anything I just worry like hell but then three o'clock sharp I put on my coat. yeah what an exciting makes you yeah, miss the brothel blah, blah, blah. what we're learning right now is he's lucky happy go lucky and carefree and he just travels around the country playing in bands and everything uh. you know so in, towards the end of the film, we're going to be—that's going to be spun into. You don't real, live in the real world, Casey. She's so, the real world. Right. The ugliness. 
Okay, I want to read some of these joke panels before it's too late. Okay. Moscovich, you call this a whorehouse one more time, and I'll call the Anti-Defamation League. And then the guy says to her, $100? You really know how to hurt a guy. And then uh, Polly says to the girls, remember, if we get raided, everyone jump into the tub, and I'll hang the mitzvah sign. They have a little. Uh, well, they keep doing Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. Well, they have they have an asterisk. They explain what it is. They say Orthodox ritual bath. Oh my God, that's so insulting. That is Pearl Schmurl. That, that means I bet she never <laughs> throws a party like this. Okay, oh, wait. Here. Turn this up. Turn this up. All right, all right. Do you have a good time? Marvelous. Okay. Now, for, for the first, everything's nice and nice, right? It's a nice world. But for what the first time ever in this movie, yeah. we're going to have the first smell of not Does he know? Does he know? Done. Come on, put it up, put it up. That's up. Good night. Here it comes. Mm-hmm. You know something, Polly? Uh oh. Uh oh. If anybody had ever told me that one day I'd be a whore, I never would have believed it. Shit just got real! Okay, so the director says, okay, you've seen the nicey night. Now we're gonna pretend. We're going to head towards everything's bad. Look at the, their face. Yeah, well, that's Shelly Winters for you, man. Look at her. She's completely distraught. Awful. Does, did the band gets paid by the note? They're just constantly in the background, the music. understand. <laughs> I wasn't going to put the poor guy to the test. He was saying, I'm not going to date Casey because I would just hurt him. And the test I'm is the ice madam. bucket challenge, am I right? That's right. Yeah. You did see this. I did see okay. this. It's shakedown, just, shakedown. Shakedown. Oh, the cops want a little something, something? Right. This was first released in San Francisco, your hometown, August 12th, 1964. My adopted city. Wow. And then... Uh, and then I got it, September 1, 1964, in New York. So once again, you guys were ahead of us. Well, they used to they used to do that with movies. They would roll them out, so they would they would have it in New York, and Pauline Kael will say this movie was great, and then they would roll it out to Chicago, say, and they'll say Pauline Kael, the, uh, the New Yorker, says this is great, right? And right. it would go uh, no, but, and then the suburbs of whatever town would say if she says that great, I would like that movie, and they would order it, right? So we play it around like that, but Jaws kind of stopped it. They realized they could just release it all at once across country yeah, and make money. That's right. Just distrib- mass distribution. Mass distribute. Don't wait for people to ask for it. Tell them they're getting it. Now, there's a deadline for Oscar nominations that it has to play in New York and Los Angeles at a certain date to be eligible. So a lot of times oh. you'll see, uh, like, Christmas Day releases in New York and, you know, like, uh, the blind side or whatever. Like, the, the movie that they really want to push when the mm-hmm. Oscar season hits. Like, they're relevant, right? I think this is relevant. The, the Leonardo DiCaprio Bear movie. like Oh, re- the Reverend. Reverend, Reverend. yeah. So that movie, like, that played in New York and L.A., and then it became nominated, and then it was released, you know, nationwide during the whole right. crest of the Oscars. Yeah, that makes so much sense. They're, but they're... I, can't, I hate that. I always hate that. I always yeah, hate, it's... like... Because it takes me about six months to eventually see a movie. And to have this, like, this is the best movie and it just came out last week, it's like, fuck. You know, <laughs> I had all year to see movies. Can't you, like, promote the movie? Yeah, and, now yeah. I got a rush to... To see it? I really wanted to see that Rev. I know that that wasn't your point, but just because you brought up the Reverend, yeah. Revenant. Revenant. I wanted to see it because of that bear attack. Oh, the whole movie is good. It's a solid movie. I did a lot of hiking at that time, and... It's just black bears. It's not the same thing, but still. It's a pretty. They. I mean, they, and they leave them for dead, basically. Yeah. So that's then he comes back. It's very relevant. Okay, look in the center there. That's the Joker. It is Caesar. You've got your Caesar. problems. I've got mine. I love the tracking. There's like, it's a 1960s movie that's shot in black and white, and it's an 80s VCR copy with the tracking in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
pop culture. Now, Cesar Romero Jr. is playing Lucky Luciano, and that's the politician in the center there. Yeah, he's having a good time. That they're going to, yeah. See, Cesar Romero just stands well, out of everything he's in. Place we can talk. Even, yeah. the, even in Batman, you, you knew who he was. Like, he would just always pop out. He always played Latin lovers. He was Joker in 66, so this was like, you know, a couple of years prior. Two years earlier. Yeah. So there was this Cisco kid. Uh, there were they were Western movies. There were six of them made, the Cisco kid, and he was... Uh, that's what made him a big deal, 39 through 41. He was always the leading man with, like, Carmen Miranda. And, and this name is Betty Grable, which everyone says. I really don't know who that is, but except it... Betty Grable. He, yeah. Who's that? She's a big deal. Was she in Gone with uh, something? Ah, you like me. Maybe. Right? I don't know. I should no, know I who know. she is. <laughs> he played alongside Shirley Temple in 39. He was in The Thin Man as the bad guy. Oh, I've seen The Thin Man a couple in times. 34. Yeah. That's. Have you seen The Thin Man movies? Sure. They're great. The first yeah, one, especially because they, all they do is drink. And then... Yep. Like, Bad guy comes in, Nick and Nora. So Nick decides, he cold cocks Nora it's into unconsciousness. And then he fights the bad guy. But he did that because he didn't want her to be conscious. During, I don't know, like to save her, he, <laughs> he right. punches her out. So she yeah. doesn't have to experience what's going on. And she comes to and he's like, oh dear, I saved you from a da da da. I saved <laughs> And he just watched him like guzzle so much alcohol. Terrible. And he's punching his wife. It's insane. Yeah, and there was seven of those movies. And the last one, they have a kid, you know. I didn't see all of them. I definitely saw the first one and several. Well, he they live, in, want... San, they live in San Francisco. And they, their mansion yeah. is the Sutro, is the premises of Sutro. Like, there was a famous rich guy named Sutro. And one of the mm -hmm. things he did was that he didn't like the smell of San Franciscans, so he created a trolley, like a train line, and he created his own bathhouse by the ocean, by Ocean Beach, where I do Kavikas. And it's long since burned oh. down. But then he built like a transportation line to get all the smelly San Franciscans to go down to his bathhouse. And he <laughs> donated his mansion. There's Sutro Park, there's Sutro Tower, there's this and that. So he donated it. And in The Thin Man, they drive up to what is actually part of Sutro Park right now. Like, they use right. it as their driveway. It's really funny. Yeah, we don't have any tech billionaires like, you know, you guys are smelly. I'm going to build a bathhouse and I'll build like a cable <laughs> car to get you over there. To get you over there to use it, goddamn. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. Okay, listen. What we missed. Lucky Luciano met with that politician, and they said, we know you're putting up this guy for office, and we don't want you to. We want you to put up this guy, and we'll make a big contribution. They're like, and if I don't, and he goes, well, then we'll contribute to your, your partner. I don't know. It was basically a, pol a polite shakedown, a very polite shakedown. This is the way yeah. it's going to be. You're going to put in Luke, Lucky Luciano's. This movie is very nice. Even Lucky Luciano, you know, politely shakes you down. <laughs> yeah, politely. Um, right now, it was, uh, that's um, the boyfriend who's not the boyfriend saying, I'll be, I'm coming into town off of the great gig you gave me, and you better go on a date with me. All right, so here's, here's then, a joke from uh, Diary of a Jewish Madam, which was a ripoff of the comic strip based on Fanny Hillman. He goes, Oi vey, Mildred, if you think sex is a pain in the behind, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> that actually works. Oh, wow. You might be doing <laughs> it right. Uh, what else we got? <laughs> uh, Abe, just because you're with the Supreme Court, you're not doing my taxes anymore? Uh Oh, that Abe was referencing the first Jewish Supreme Court uh, justice. Because uh -huh. he went to, she goes to Washington. Okay, wait, wait, wait. All right. Look. Nice, nice heroin. She was about to shoot that in her veins. Look, she's going to do it. Duh. What is this? Nice, nice heroin? I need a hit. Not long enough to forget 
You Look don't have that. to go to bed with them. Wow. Feel their ugly bodies. I'm a whore. Whore. Now that's as bad as the... <sighs> that's kind of like as mean as it's going to get for this movie. That was pretty uh, stark. Yeah, yeah. Oh, put the needle now on the record. Oh, she's going through the withdrawals? Well, it's the nice enough withdrawal. Listen to me, you're a sick girl. You're sick, but you got to kick it or I can't keep you here, honey. I can't. And you got to fight it. We'll help you, honey, but you've got to fight. It's the only way. No, I've got to I can't. You've got to act. You've got to act. You gotta act like you're going through withdrawal. No, the only way. I can't act. act. Oh, I'm rhythming around. I can't act. I can't act. Listen, the director said the music, the music will cover up any bad acting. <laughs> Roll them. Roll them. Okay, when you score this music, make it dramatic, all right, to make up for what's on yeah. the screen. All they did was add violins to make it dramatic. Oh, Check she's it going out, through okay. withdrawal. I violins right now. This is the toughest 10 minutes of her life. Oh, I'm still going. To... <laughs> is this like the last two weeks? How, how much time has passed? She's just writhing around in bed. Yeah, it's just, it's just like. Oh, now she's sleeping. I got it out of my system. Thanks, guys. She's saying, if you squeeze my boob. It will honk. It'll honk, I'll tell you. Polly, she says. Okay, watch this. Watch this. She's no dummy. She's been waiting for this day. They left it to honk. Oh, pay less shoe gonna to the head. The money. She's gonna get the money. I'm gonna get, get out some of here. 1930s we'll... horse. That's right. And then we will get to our Star Trek connection. Really? Oh, there is a Star Trek connection. Oh, yeah. And a really good one. A very, very direct one. Oh, so William Shatner shows up thinking it's a real whorehouse? <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Do Hello, you ladies. you have a redhead? Right. <laughs> Hello. I am here for a threesome. I don't think I've ever done a William Shatner before. This little filly here. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Okay, so now Polly's like, tell me the truth, tell me the truth. Okay. You were knocked unconscious by a shoe? Yes. <laughs> yes. Wait, in the back of your head? Yes. Yes, you see this heel print? It was a heavy heel. So um, now she's admitting that uh, this musician who's a saxophonist down at the dance club uh -huh. is the guy who does it and is getting it for her and they do it together and yeah jazz yeah jazz that's what happens when you listen to jazz and I see you know yeah. you're shooting up in your yeah. bordello daydreaming your fellow uh, prostitutes mm -hmm. well you're nicey nice shooting up in your nicey nice bordello and and yeah. your nicey nights. You co I like their co workers. Like, no one's like looking out for themselves, right? No, we're a team. Right. So now they went down to the employment agency who I got the job for the guy. The and they just looked it up. What are the name of the right, sax Polly. players? And they found their guy. Now they're going to go to his apartment and try to find uh, the girl. They went to the employment agency. Employment agency, yeah. God, it's so weird. Well, back then, and I don't know if it's true, um, musicians were much more, and actors, and, you know, any of the oh, arts. Like an agent, more, I see. Like a job. But it's like an agent who, it's like, you go, you need somebody to clean your apartment here. Betty Lou is available. Oh, so you this isn't like. play clarinet in the. This band. isn't like Broadway Danny Rose. This is like a general. No. Right. Huh. Yeah. Hi. I like to get someone to clean my house and play saxophone. I got just the two people for you. No, just one person, please. <laughs> okay. But, now, there was a Star Trek episode called I Mud, and then there was a second one called Harry's Women. And this guy named Harry Mud was like a 
entrepreneurial guy. And there he is playing the sax right now. On Very the nice. And that's from the old series, huh? Yes. And if you knew Star Trek, you'd look at that ugly face right there and go, that's Harry Mudd. <laughs> In another world. He looks like a, a handsome uh, Ron Jeremy. You play real fine horn, Oh, Dixie. really? That's, that's bad for Ron Jeremy because this guy's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Let's see. I'll take his shirt off and I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, she is out. Yeah, she's done the heroin again, and basically she's not going to recover for this. So they're like, okay, let's take her out of here. But as soon as they try to take her, Harry Mudd gets yeah. out of his like coma and attacks. Oh, so he won't let her escape. Right. Harry Mudd. So wh who's Harry Mudd in the Star Trek world? Is he like <clears throat> an American? Uh, no. Uh, he's like, the, the ship would like do shore leave somewhere and they just bump into him. He's like a merchant. And was he it? was peddling women. He was giving them your beautiful pills. What about tribbles? There is, he is. is. Does he sell tribbles? No, but it's, you're right, though. It's that kind of guy who Harry Mudd was being. Like, Harry Mudd would have been perfect to be the guy who sold the triples. Huh. But nobody knew it was going to be a Star Trek universe. Oh, here we go. Mud, mud, mud wrestling. <laughs> mud flap. Mud flap. Mud wrestling. He was bald even back then. Oh. Da -da -da -da. Ba -ba 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 -ba. da 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 Wow, you you missed my face and it made me fall over. And it made a noise. Your the your swing was so brutal, even though it didn't touch me, I flailed over. Listen, your miss of my face was so loud, I went uh, landed on the ground. Oh, here's the doctor. Doctor, tell it to us straight. No chance. This just no chance. We can't bring her out of it. Her respiratory system had been damaged. Wow, that must have been some really good stuff. Yeah, the, think about what he said, though. They can't bring her out of her uh -huh. coma because her respiratory system has been damaged. Those are just words what? just tossed yeah. together. <laughs> That's right. Talk about Star Trek. They might as well talk about the hyperdrive while they're at it. I did a dermograft on his skin, and there's got to be a melatonin layer in there somewhere. <laughs> he just can't operate. Yeah, she's too far gone. Her respiratory, you know... And He's stuff. the finest dermatologist in all of Lower East Windsor. No skin too deep. <laughs> <laughs> we checked her UV graph, and we're going to have to refibrillate the flabulator. <laughs> or it's curtain. I it's told her. Curtain. I told her lay off that stuff, or your flabulator will get flubulated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Pauly is very grateful. Where this was supposed to be their date night, and instead it turned into a crusade to Same. save a heroin girl. And so now yeah. Polly's gonna fess up. Oh, right. It seems to me she that wasn't just know. some heroin girl, she was a prostitute, and I am a madam. There you go. Which you is like morally repugnant. World. A world completely full of the joy of living. Living is my favorite pastime. Is living your favorite pastime? I prefer uh, what? ball. That's <laughs> oh, what he said. Okay. Yeah, he, well, she's saying, like, you're so alive, you live every moment. He goes, living's my favorite pastime. It's supposed to be a joke. Okay, speaking of which, here's Fanny Hillman on campus. Look, okay, girls. I gotta interrupt you. I gotta oh, interrupt come you. on, man. All right, okay. go ahead. Now, look, is Fanny Hillman a different madam or no something? it's based on i th i think the Polly was, adler yeah there's something like that wait, wait a minute wait a second. this is polly adler all right hang on i don't know who fanny and all i right. don't think she's jewish but okay okay hang on i'm gonna figure this out okay okay all right because they have houses not a home is mentioned this the 1960s were filled with Jewish humor and burgeoning sexuality, and these two things collided in the formation of Fanny Hillman, a matronly woman who ran her well-regarded house of ill repute with a very Yiddish twang. Madam Hillman was the star of a series of cartoon booklets created by a very Jewish writing staff and drawn 
uh, by Sergio Leone. The first book, mm-hmm. Fanny Hillman, Memoirs of a Jewish Madam, came out in 1965, a year after the release of the film, A House is Not a Home, in which the Jewish Shirley Winters played a madam in the adaptation of the autobiography of a real Jewish madam. So maybe it's based on. Yeah, sounds like it. So they, so she didn't get any money. Oh, I can't believe they exploited her like that. They made money <laughs> off that woman and she didn't see oh, barely that's any? Not right. That is just not <laughs> fair. <laughs> okay, so I think she's going to admit she's a madam now. I'm not the naive girl you protected the first night we met. Come on. I'll take you home. I'm a madam. Well, what kind of a crack is that? $500, well, you'll find out. No, she's not a prostitute. I run a house of prostitution. By the way, that's another nice nice thing that's not true in the real life. She she never slept with anyone for money. She was just a madam. Okay, here's Heroin Girl. Oh, they're at the funeral. Look at it. It looks like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Heart Club fan cover. (laughs) Just with prostitutes. Without a cast of characters. Yeah. Yeah. Just just the groupies. Front row. Yeah. Right. We got all the band members out and just left the, the hangers on. Then Polly says that the girls never mentioned her name again. Huh. What, now we have look? a funny joke. They're waiting for a train that's never coming out on Long Island. And they're like, can you gentlemen please give us a lift to Manhattan? They're like, that's just where we're going. And he's like, you girls need protection. I'm the police chief. And it's like, ha, ha, ha. The police uh, chief's driving. He says, of... we're teachers on our field trip. And she goes, what school are you from? She goes, Polytech. Ha, ha. Polytech, I let's, love it. Yeah, let's Factor. hear it. How nice. Uh, it's just what we need. Well, what could such lovely ladies as you be doing so far Being out here all by yourself? Oh, uh, well, uh, we're a group of school teachers on our weekly field trip. Uh, nature study. <laughs> school teachers? Of what school? Polytech. Oh. School of hard knockers. School <laughs> <laughs> of hard knockers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they did have a scene where they're like, get out of the way when they're driving, honk, honk. Yeah, no, here, co- right. here comes Dr. Bellows. Now, you're saying, you're saying that okay. this illegal casino probably didn't exist in real life. This is a Hollywood version that we're viewing as real life. No, no, this is her brothel. This, oh. This is her brothel. No, I think the real li- I think the casinos were real life. I think gambling houses, speakeasies, like all that stuff from the 30s, I think that was real. I was saying like that nightclub in the 40s, the hippie nightclub in the 60s, yeah. the punk nightclub in the 80s. Yeah. These are places that only uh, little bits and pieces existed oh, separate from each other. I, I'm going to top you again. We watched the movie Joysticks, one of our favorite movies, and they had that yeah. arcade. That arcade, can, it was a soundstage. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the arcade did mimic real life there were arcades just there was like never that. an arcade that looked like that no I, you, giant screens and giant pac-mans on the wall oh that they got up and did the competition of yeah. course you're right yeah 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 come on um, man okay so <laughs> here's casey right and he's being an asshole he shows up all drunk he's like ah, i'm a patron see casey is whore. casey's like a real prick when, he, when his sunshine band's not with him <laughs> yeah really Look at him, Ed. Adam, don't you think you're getting a little out of line, young man? Oh, yeah, Major Healy. Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> Have they recently written a book of etiquette for whorehouses? Ooh. Ooh. We'll do it your way. Damn. What do you want? Wow. That's better. That's more like it. Now we're getting someplace. I must say, you just rock tell well to find it hard to make a choice. Uh, knowing my taste as you do, won't you help me make a selection? I'm in the market for a luxury rather than a utility. Say something like, uh, oh, that fine little piece over here. Right, eh? piece. Do, do I have it here or do I take it with Whatever you want. That's as far as it goes. Sober him up. No, Frank! Oh, oh yeah. Polly was humoring him, but 
Frank, you know, you know, again. you don't act like a prick at a brothel. This is what happens. Right. Yeah. Oh, is there an etiquette? Is there a book of etiquette for the whole house? What a great idea. I'll write a book. <laughs> <laughs> house rules. Oh, my goodness. I'm still acting. I'm still acting. What did the... Uh, the oh fuck it. <laughs> what did the particle say to the prostitution head? Uh, the particle, the particle. Uh, okay, so particle. So traveling light, prostitution head. You mean the late, the madam? Are you ready? I have a yeah. Okay. Madam, I'm atom. But oh, Mike, a particle. <laughs> Is it an atom a particle? Uh. I, uh, Look, it can a... be, but you're talking about photons. It's different. Oh, yeah. all right. What particle... did the proton say it's to a, wait, the... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> when you have uh, two atoms collide in yes. a super collider, okay. what explodes out, what yeah. breaks, uh -huh. are particles. Oh. Like an electron is a particle. Huh. Shit. Yeah. A quark is a particle. Well, I was trying to make a pun on the palindrome, madam, oh, madam. Madam, I'm Adam. Like right. if you spell that backwards, it's the same sentence. Yeah, palindrome. Okay, so basically the it's the fencer again, the hot stuff. But... Uh, Look at that cop drinking a beer in the kitchen of the bordello. Fucking A. Yeah. Yeah. That's a classy so joint. what's happening is there's going to be a... They want to throw a party for the new captain who is just... Uh, and they were picking up their shakedown money. Okay, let me tell you something about Mr. Dr. Bellows, right? Okay. This is a really messed up thing. You know Barbara Eden. You just know her. She's got to be a jerk. You just know it from the way she, wow, look at me, you know, and her PTA. And, oh, you're terrible. Uh, no, listen, uh, the guy who did Dallas, what's his name, who passed away? Oh, uh, Larry, Hang Larry Hangman. Yeah. Rahusen. No, he's very clear about it. He never wanted to do a I Dream a Genie reunion because it would empower her. And she was, she's like a kooky kook lady. Oh, okay. so no one liked Barbara about, Eden? I'm like, you're never going to meet Barbara Eden, and nobody is going to. Okay. All right. In, in 2011, uh, I Dream a Genie co star Barbara Eden, Eden gave an interview to TV Guide magazine, and she outed Dr. Bellows as being gay. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that awful? She's just going to let it go. Yeah. Remember that sitcom I did 40 uh, years ago, 50 years ago? <laughs> That's right. 2011, yeah. she did this interview. Okay, there's Cesar Romero, and he's he's uh, moving into the docks, and he's starting to do – he doesn't want anything to do with the brothel. He can't support the brothel, but you can indirectly give him money. So she, he's like putting someone in charge of all the business to – he can like pay off the brothel. Uh, not pay off, but like invest in it. Right. Nothing points back to Lucky Luciano. That's the that's the point. They're trying to establish right now in the plot because guess what? It will. <laughs> oh, really, Lucky? Yeah. So he's saying, okay, I want you to handle the docks. Those Nothing back to Lucky Luciano. Hey, Carl, keep talking. Do you mind? Um. Yeah. Okay. And then he, uh, you handle the brothel end of the business. Nothing ties back to Lucky Luciano. So, gosh, what can I say about this? Some boring stuff. Embassy Picture Corporation distributed it. It was, this is technically an independent film. It was, no, no movie house made this. It was in order to sell it to a movie house. And there was a, they they sold it to Paramount, who distributed it. That's how it got into the Oscar-nominated realm, you know. So a bunch of independent people who were in the business made this film, and they sold it to Paramount. The classiest thing about this film is that title song, A House Is Not A Home. Uh, Burt Bacharach wrote that with somebody else. But it's a – with Hal David is his name. But it's a standard. You hear, you know – Every Piazzadora all the way to Luther Vandross have covered this song. Dusty Springfield. So where's Mike? 
might come back. Uh, 98 minute running. T- okay, there's something ironic. This is all New York City, of course, but the whole thing was shot in Paramount Studios on Melrose Avenue in Hollywood, Los Angeles. Which I've been to. Mm-hmm. So the, you know, they yeah. say like it was independently made, but come on. They rented the lot of Paramount. Paramount distributed it. Maybe well, that's like a cover story. So that it doesn't look like they did a prostitution movie. I don't know. Well, no, no. Paramount Pictures proudly presents in 1964. Yeah. Right. They they got rid of the pa- proudly, right? They just, okay, look, we have a wow. dancing girl. We haven't had this for this the first time in the film. Now, this is entertainment, right? Just sit there and watch yeah, someone Yeah. Dance. And I guess this is the first time we ever seen it. She's diversifying. Oh. Yeah, usually it's just go right into the bedrooms. A little parlor game. She's, she's uh, wising up a bit, Polly. So what's happened here is they moved to the East Town. So you remember the cop who's always got him on, her on the grass or whatever? Right. Okay, so he gets moved to the east side, too. And she's like, what a coincidence. More money for you. And he goes, nope, surprise, this is a raid. Because he wants to make headlines because his boss likes headlines. He's new to the area. He's got to make a name for himself with his boss. Yeah, that's what he comes Ambition. To raid Polly Adler. That's my life's ambition. Oh, no, no. I've been making my regular payoffs. Well, that has nothing to do with it. You see, your newspaper copy now. When Polly Atlas is rated... You know, every, he's in my the new big world. madam in New York, and people know her, even though it's illegal. God, do you remember the night they raided Minsky's? Boy, that was some night. <laughs> I, I, that's funny somehow. I don't know what... That's a reference. Explain was a, the joke to me. All right, so there was a, I guess it was a play and a movie, but it was called The Night They Raided Minsky's, and I think it was about a Chicago brothel. Oh, okay. Did you ever see the best little whorehouse in Texas? Uh, yeah, that was uh, more of a romance. It was uh, Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton, yeah. And that was a long-running Broadway play, too. Yes, it was. And it was a fun show. Yeah? But it was, once again, nice. Okay, here's a dancer, and it's the rain! The rain, Aww. see? You go. Hey, look, there's Carl in the background. I've got a family officer. Look how he's hot. She's uh, hot covering her. Yeah. Her veils. She's reveiling. Okay, now, the cop's ma- doing this to make a name for himself with the, with the new captain, right? Right. And that's so he the goes, new captain? Hold it, fatso! Yeah, uh, guess who it is? Oh, my God, it's Mel Blanc. Ooh, ooh. Inspector Muldoon! The whole the hell are you? Sergeant Rips of the 4th Division. Who ordered this raid? It was my own idea, sir. Oh, it was your, your own, own idea. Your own idea, was he? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> First thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Excuse me, miss. Yes, sir. Is that lazy Look, writing, I, or does he have off. to say it? The raid's off. I changed me mind. <laughs> Go ahead, let's look. Oh, well, it was off. your idea, eh? As long as the sergeant's dipping in here, we're not going to raid. <laughs> wow Now uh, Shelly Winters put on a lot of weight For that role But beside an adventure I don't know if you know that She just didn't become fat or something She, she did it for that role? That, right Because she has to swim under If you remember There's a, there's a plot point She's got to swim under the water to safety Where there's an air bubble on the other side Yes you remember? of course Yeah of course With um, Gene Hackman yeah, leading was, them all. It was like yeah, under, not there, make. the boat has flipped right. upside down. And it was like a ballroom or yeah. something. So she gained a lot of weight for that film, but guess what? She couldn't take it off. She never took it off. Well, she's you know she's a terrific actress, she's terrific, and she's one of those sex symbols that later generations don't really know that she's a sex symbol or or nope, would associate they don't. like Shirley MacLaine. I, have you seen the movie The Apartment, which is about a guy who has... Sure. Yeah. She's, oh, yeah. She's cute as can be, but we know I her from like Terms of Endearment, or we know her from her books, where she's you know about three decades after that. And yeah. you, you, when you see her you younger... You don't know why she was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or she was in the Rat Pack movie, what was it, Ocean's Eleven? She's, she's gorgeous. She's a little, you know, a little pixie. And 
but you didn't realize that until you see the 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 other movies, you know, that they right. have this career where they're known for other things. By the way, uh, the bad guy in Ocean's Eleven, 1960, Frank Sinatra, was Cesar Romero Jr. Oh, what do you know? Full circle. My favorite scene yeah. in Ocean's Eleven is, of course, one, one of the Ocean's Eleven was Norman Fell. And what his job was to spray paint the doorknobs of the casino so at night they glow or something like that. Do you remember that? I, I saw that film. I don't remember that part. I remember so much from it. I remember Shirley MacLaine and, uh, shit, I forgot who yeah. the other woman was. Angie Dickinson, I believe. Uh, they were like kind of just party girls who kind of meet up with them. In Vegas. Okay, so I want you to know that it's New Year's Eve. And what they're saying is on Christmas and New Year's Eve, we don't do any business because everyone's home with their family. Right. right? <clears throat> so a competing madam, but she doesn't consider it competing. Like a, another madam who's as big as Polly has brought her girls over to surprise them. Like as a. Uh, oh, that's and that must be the madam right camaraderie. there. Camaraderie. Five minutes to the new year, says the ticker tape. Oh, this must have been shot in New York during New Year's. Now, you see the one sitting there on the left, yeah. all slunched, slunched yeah. over. Long night. Yeah. She is very discontent. She is so upset that she's a whore. So the other madam starts talking, this one here, and then she freaks out and goes, who cares about your life story? You right. should hear it. I'm a whore. Everybody says to me, Patty. You've got plenty of money. Then you're getting old. Why are you still a madam? <laughs> Watch. See how mad she is? She, no, she's going noises. cross-eyed in, in madness. Who the hell wants to visit she looks like Anna Nicole madam, Smith man. a little. You tell me. Yeah. And I don't want to die and of me. loneliness. T.S. Who the hell wants to hear your life story? Lorraine, Do you really think we're going to have a good time tonight? Lorraine, you've been drinking. Yeah. Now, come on, this is a party. Who are we kidding? Hear them out there with their wives and families. Now, tell me something. What have we got to celebrate about? What have we got to celebrate about? Where has she been this whole movie? She's the best thing in this. Right. Lorraine loses it. The right, and it, and it happened with the snap of a finger. She was fine the whole film. She's just was sick of hearing Madam talk. Is that Raquel? Maybe. Yeah. There's three people who are maybe, maybe Raquel. They're all Raquel at the end of the movie. Now, what's to become of Lorraine if she's this upset? Oh, Can uh... Guess? I, I guess they say, right? they say, well, I, uh, we'll give two weeks notice. and uh, Right, right. And here's your severance. I don't Sorry, want two weeks notice. Okay, well, <laughs> let's just cut you a check for the two weeks and get you out now. Right. This is employment at will. What about my Cobra? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Shirley Winters will now do some horrible acting. Look, she's trying to make it fun. So happy New Year! Oh, it's all bombed out. Oh, it's all done. <sighs> no one's celebrating. No, thanks for nothing, Lorraine. You it's killed New Year's. You killed this New Year's Eve party. You regular Dick Clark. Lorraine. Yeah, you know Dick Clark. Now, watch. Ready for some bad acting? Okay. Oh no! Some good acting. Yeah. Nope. Don't do it, Lorraine. Lorraine! My hat. Hey, roll them. Can you be more stressed? Try it. Roll them. Her hat fell off the ledge, too. My hat. Lorraine, get my hat. Extra, extra. Lorraine jumps. <laughs> Lorraine, can you, re can you get my hat? While you're down there. While you're down there. While you're down there. Just bring it up. Okay, so. The headlines say Lucky Lucky Luciano. Lucky, yeah, yeah. Says and there's says Doctor Bellows in, indicted with. Okay, it says um, Lucky Luciano all involved with brothels, and they're like, ah, I'm trying to pin this on me. How did this happen? I'm not <laughs> you know, because they've got like uh, arms length 
guy, you know. It's yeah. Not even tied to him on any books or anything. He's trying to strong on me. And so the other one goes, well, you know, he says he's got 17 witnesses. They're going to put you at the brothel and <laughs> take some payments and, you know. Payoffs of the threats of violence. He also claims... Is he going to take down uh, Polly? Is that, is that how this movie is going to wrap up? I mean, who gives no, a shit? No, no. This is the first time this movie has gone away from Polly, right? Now we're talking... No. no. It's a different scene. Well, we've seen the mobsters talking to politicians, the politicians making so. deals. Now, we've had a whole through line here of the CD gangster underworld and how it's mixed up with the legit world. Ah, uh, legit world of prostitution. Uh, no, that would be the city hall side. <laughs> the police, the police side, you know, the the legit institutions of our government. So I so I I can't believe like uh, brothels are affected by the holidays as just like other like you ever try <laughs> to do a comedy show on a holiday and there's no one out. <laughs> I did one on Thanksgiving Eve that kind of worked out. But... You did it on Wednesday night. Well, that that's fine. Yeah. Well, the thing is, everybody was home for Thanksgiving. That's actually why it was very successful. Because a Wednesday night, you're not going to be sick. Okay, so Lucky Luciano just now like half accused Frank. Like, are you the reason they think it's me? Because you know it's not me. Right. So Frank is down at the brothel to get some answers. Listen, see. Pleased to know you. Come on, scram. What do you talk? What do you talk? I'll rustle everyone in the other room. Push everyone into the outside there. What do you think you're trying to do? I want a straight answer. Say, hey, what's your angle? Sure. What's your beef, you buddy? <laughs> Where's the fire, cadet? <laughs> this is before World War II it takes place? Uh, yes. Uh, that's right. It was thir- yeah. It's before World War. World War One? Uh, no, 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 no. You. Yeah, this doesn't go into the forties. Huh. So this, I guess, there's prohibition, and there's like, I don't know. Well, there was prohibition. We're past that now. We're in the thirties here. Even though everyone's got 1964 haircuts, so <laughs> now Lucky is he's. He's Frank's never been mean like this to Shelley Winter, no. right? So she's like, this has got to be serious. So she goes, of course we pay off Lucky Luciano. We pay him off every... That guy, what's his name, comes down here. Well, what's his name? <laughs> so this person who's associated with Lucky yeah. Luciano's organization, he's the brother of some prominent guy, Ducky. has been going down to like all of the brothels like, and pretending to take money from them oh, like for lucky that because, is there's no honor among thieves <laughs> so here robert uh frank knows that now and he's at the guy's office the brother is in the center there huh is he gonna get whacked yeah listen see i run a respectable business who are you gonna believe huh huh this guy is your own brother see i'm your brother i'm not some tramp madam Okay, this fellas. Like, All right, fellas. Let's... Don't push it too hard, Angelo. I don't want to hear anymore. It makes me sick inside just to hear somebody even thinks it. He so believed. Frank's got evidence that the brother's been doing this. Yeah. Evidence. Some, some evidence. Hubba, hubba. Look at that. Oh, boy. Makeup job is horrendous. You did this. Remember her, Vince? It looks like you punched her. She remembers you. Try telling her Luciano didn't put him up to it. Try to make her believe it. Which Luciano didn't. It was the brother knowing that everyone would give him money, thinking he represented. Right. Lucky. So now the brother's like, Fredo. You're dead to me now. Yeah, it totally has a Mo Green vibe. Wait, Mo Green? No, no, no. This is the brother, so it's like, I didn't know it was going to be a hit, Mikey. Not really. It's not analogous, right? Just that they're brothers. 
Right. So now he's pulled his gun on his brother saying, back off. Wow, his own he's brother. Like, you're, yeah, you're not going to shoot me. You don't have the guts. And of course, you don't. Easy, Angelo. He means it. You ain't got the guts. You ain't got the guts. You ain't got the guts. Remember when you went fishing and you got pissed off because I didn't bring the chum? You're like, you yeah, ain't got the guts. You got the guts. Is chum always guts? I guess it is. Yeah, chum guts. Well, it's cut up uh, everything. Okay, there we have a rotary phone. Uh-huh. That's a, the beginning of the movie they were using the old-timey phone. Yeah, that's right. With yeah. the uh, horn and... Yeah. Hello. Hi. Are you the electricity bill payer of your house? You stop. We're having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that prank call where you call up and you say you're from, like, you know, Con Edison. And, yeah. And there's a problem with the AT&T. And uh, unfortunately, in the next call you're going to get, will be electrocuted. But thank you for your time. And then you hang <laughs> up and you call again. <laughs> See if they answer. Hello? Now, look, yeah, hi. Ah! Remember, <laughs> it's Cagney and Lacey Lady from the beginning of the show. Yeah, film. it's Cindy Williams. Yeah, and... She's so much uglier than Cindy Williams. Why is she Cindy Williams? Because her hair is short. Hair short. She's got a little petite nose. That is true. She does have the nose. Anyway, so it's like, let's come down here and remember old times. And he goes, are you Larry Shemp? (laughs) I'm Curly (laughs) Moe. Curly Shemp. You don't want to know. So it turns out that it wasn't the the reason they put her up to it to get her to go down there. The thing is, she's married now, and she couldn't really meet Polly because the husband might get ideas that she knows Polly Adler, the famous. But look who it is. Huh. Let's see. Oh, it's the Jasbo. Yeah, that's right, and she's fake. Hello, Polly. So. He's apologizing for being, you know, so terrible. How are you? I'm sorry I lost my cool at your bordello. It was not cool. I showed up to your work, and I made fun of your prostitutes, and I'm really sorry. What's his name? Casey. It's Casey, right? Right, yeah. Casey, no sunshine van. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So basically now it's like, I love you, Polly. You know, marry me is essentially what it is. So then Polly's, yeah. And so Polly's all high on the idea of marrying him. And she goes back to this Frank gangster guy, says, Mary, are you going to get married? And she goes, fat chance. There's no way. <laughs> you can't come back to the good side. You're on the dark side. And she goes, like, let me go, Frank. And he goes, I'd love to let you go. It's not me. I'm not keeping you. It's just not going to work. So she goes, we'll go away when some, nobody knows us. He goes, yeah, but Casey knows you. It doesn't matter how far away you go. You know you. You were you sold flesh. Yeah. He's got a good pitch, it though. I would say. Once. You didn't have it coming to you. Well, he's apologizing now for the problem. Really huh? I guess if you uh, if you marry a, a madam, like you you got your uh, bachelor party all squared away. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Let's get out of here. Uh, yeah, well, they say he's, well, he just wants to save money on the bachelor party. <laughs> uh, I want Lorraine and I want Raquel Welsh. Yeah. Well, I can give you Raquel Welsh, but I have bad news about Lorraine. To come back to New York. Oh, Lorraine's great. She's always on the edge. Yeah, about yeah, that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, about that. Was there a drop in quality? Was... <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't say a drop in quality. <laughs> Hmm, I remember Lorraine as being quite chesty, but she really looks flat. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> is she, oh, uh, she left the bordello? Is she on the streets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she left the bordello and went straight to the streets. <laughs> Shelley Winters was in Pete's Dragon, that Disney one. Yeah, she played the dragon. Seven. I, she played the dragon. Uh, yeah, that was after Poseidon Adventure. So I told you she was the grandmother on the sitcom because the yeah. mother was on last time. 
Look, I, all um, I gotta say is that I, we love Shirley Winters, and she did pass away. But she's, one of her last movies, she played Polly Shore's mom in Jury Duty, and I'm never gonna let yeah. that go. Never. She won Academy Award for Diary of Anne Frank. That's kind of how she started out. That was '59. She was blacklisted from Hollywood because <laughs> from uh, Diarrhea of Anne Frank. Is it that? Is oh, just, really? Yeah, that's too <laughs> it just much. smelled so bad. <laughs> um, dripping from okay. the attic. This internet uh, movie review, I'm going to just claim she was well cast. It says Winters is especially well cast since the heroine's rise is mirrored in her own life, born of humble beginnings. Austrian Jewish immigrant parents, starting out as Woolworth store assistant, model, vaudevillian, and nightclub chorus girl, on her way to acting classes and then stardom. Okay, that's very nice. I should mention. Oh, that also, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say I've been reading about this comic book. It's from a magazine called Hogan's Alley, which is about old comics. That's all. Okay. Charlie Lucky was what? Isn't there a story there? That's it. That's it. I just wanted to name the reference. The like site, uh, this the is reference. good. Listen to this because he won't let her go, but he is going to let her go. Meanwhile, the organization wants me to look after things. I'm expecting some of the Now that Lucky Luciano's going down, he's going to be a top dog. Frank? Lucky Luciano's a real life character, so this really happened. He, he wants yeah. me to marry him. You haven't got a chance in hell. Keep it up. Listen to him. Frank, please. Let me Please go. let me go. I'm not stopping you, Polly. I'd like to see you make it, but you just can't. Yeah, that's you that's can't what I cross the line back. It's not it like strong arming her. It's nicey nice again. He's saying you can't pretend to be an, uh, a law abiding citizen at this point. There's no turning back. Right, or not tainted dirty. I mean, you've you've done the biggest sin ever. You have peddled flesh, and there's no turning back. But but Frank, I. I'm acting so hard right now. I know it, Polly. It's just no use. It's just no use. This movie won't let you go. This movie won't let you go. You gotta end <laughs> tragically. I brought my own paper bag. I'm gonna act my way out of it. Polly, can't you see? You can't act your way out of a paper bag. <laughs> Look, honey, I'm, I'm, but I'm, Polly, I'm chewing the, fur, the scenery. You can't fool me. <laughs> Well, wow, who's do you remember Dennis Hoff? He passed away. He was a cat house proprietor, and he was like you know the HBO show Cat House, and he became like no. a celebrity pimp, like a white uh -huh. celebrity pimp. And he had a uh, a book about like how to be a, a, a pimp, or it wasn't Iceberg Slim. It was like a a, a history of himself, and then like a, a a how to yeah, like a guidance, like a guide to life book. Duh. Like a Tony Robbins book. Salad. So she's still That's leaving. The worst. Yeah. That's who's giving our. Okay, so now she's like, she sees his point, and she's For like, I'm not going to marry Casey. And now we're she back at the like, beginning. She, he says, yes, we are. He says, um. I've corrupted Casey my own loves me. And he goes, well, don't Never kill him for it. Original <laughs> ignorant decision. My subsequent we're almost at the end of this. I want to know what happened. Yeah, and clearly they're reading an excerpt from the book, which was much better than this stuff. That's and Hollywood for you. Have a home. House is not a home. Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah, right. Hollywood. Polly. Polly. You want a cracker? <laughs> Casey, cracker you. for you. <laughs> oh, I want. All he wants. Hello, Casey. This is the Dear John letter. Oh, she's going to tell him over the phone. Cool. Well. And that's how the film ends. Hello? Yeah. Hello, Casey. How do you know that? You just keep looking at the Listen. time? Yeah. I'm just looking at the we time. There's only two more it. minutes left. It's, it's, gotcha. Yeah. No, darling. It just wouldn't work. Casey, not only am I going to break up with you, I'm going to do it over the phone so you can't have a shot, final shot in this movie. No, it has nothing to do with the sunshine fan, Casey. You're so sensitive. <laughs> I 
think you'd be a great solo artist. This is not the way they are. That's the way I like it. <laughs> that was their only song, right? No, they had two other songs. I don't know the answer. I think of them as a one-hit wonder. They might have been a two. I don't know. I, I always think of like Don Kirshner's Rock Party he presents, you know, what was that? The, the Austin City The Limited. Soul Dancers. But there was oh, like... Oh, no, no. I'm mixing up two things. No, Don but, Kirshner was the serious rock guy, right? Yeah. But it wasn't there like Don Kirshner's Rock Show or something like that and they would have like yeah. Casey and the Sunshine Band and the magic of Ricky J. Da, 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 da. Wow. That was a intense phone call. Get yourself together. Wipe the tears yeah. off yourself. Go back into the... Yeah. Walk slowly. Put on your pretty face. Game face. Game face. Polly's game. It's my life of party, and now they're going to ask her to pr- impersonate that famous lady again. Oh, and there we go. Yeah, yeah, how about it, Polly? Make like Dina Bear, huh? Come on, Polly. Come on, Polly. Every time we like you. Dance like a monkey. You just broke up with your love of your life. All right, one more time. It's a, I don't even know if this is a good impression or not. She's so just walking down the... Right, because we don't know who it is. She yeah. just pretends... Last uh, time you got a cake in the face. Bittersweet. This ending is bittersweet to me. Yeah. The end. Is it really... Yeah, that crap happened. Wow. Now, I fell short from my research in about three actors. I should have really been able to clearly tell you who was Raquel Welch and who was that famous guy. we tried. We tried. We really did try. I mean, I was looking. Now, let's look for her name, Raquel Welch. Well, the the credits are cut off, so it's going to say Raquel Wall or something like that. Yeah, Raquel Wall. (laughs) <laughs> Betty See Betty Rub. Rub. She's not even really listed. Happy Charlie is played by Betty Rub. I'll say she was in a uh, Elvis film in which she like walked in as a college girl before this, but it wasn't even credited. But I didn't see her name here either. But I don't know. God, well, that's what I gotta look for is an Elvis movie. There's got to be at least one, right? Out of all the movies, well, he did? yeah. If you want a bad film. Yeah, Any Elvis there's got to be like do. the worst Elvis film. What do you think the worst Elvis film is? I have, a, I, have I wouldn't opinion. know because like anytime you turn on an Elvis film, it is bad without trying hard. Yeah, I like a uh, clam bake where uh, grab your barefoot okay. baby by the hand and do the clam. <laughs> I I have seen many many Elvis films and like they'll be at like a. Sock, a soda shop, yeah. soda jerk kind of place, and he'll like hit the, the Fonzie the, the jukebox. The, right, and the musical number pops up. I just like you and know he's play. just an average show water surfer instructor right. or or boat mechanic. Or, yeah. yeah, he's doing packing and loading on the dock. Yeah, a uh, pre a nun comes down and uh, helps him. All right, so uh, yeah, he likes a girl. That He's was an orphan. That was House Without a Home, not starring Elvis, but starring Shirley Winters, Raquel Welch, and Cesar Romero Jr. <laughs> yeah. What'd you think, Carl? And Dr. Bellows. And Dr. Bellows for My Dream of Jesus. Um, like, it was a terrible film, uh, but it was perfect for your show. I don't even know if it was perfect for our show. Our show. Well, it made a good. I don't know. I think it had some laughs. It was a, it was, it was a very polished uh, whitewashed version of, of a seedy yes. seedy world and well it uh, made it interesting to watch the nicey nice of all the bad stuff of the world presented like with a smile yeah that's true well I'm very excited to uh, introduce uh, next week's movie and okay. uh, again we appreciate you guys listening to our show and we would love for you to check out our film next week Michael Musto, formerly The Village Voice, uh, had an article on longreads.com about how bad movies are terrific. And it's a great, great article. And he names like Showgirls and Glitter and Bang, Boom, the movie we watched with Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, Boom. Yeah. yeah. And a movie called Bunny O'Hare was looked terrific, but I couldn't find a full-length version of it. But I found the next best thing. He talked about this movie. 
Uh, the version that we're going to watch, it was called Cult of the Damned, but the actual original title was Angel, Angel, Down We Go from 1969. Okay. It is a LSD movie, uh, also known as Cult of the Damned, starring Jennifer Jones of The Towering Inferno. And I have the trailer, courtesy of Sideshow Carney, and I'm going to go ahead and play the trailer, the trailer to next week's movie, Angel, Angel, Down We Go, from 1968, a.k.a. Cult of the Dam. Are we ready? Yes. All right, let's start this. Take my hand, come on, follow me. Is it Tim Morrison? Yes, yeah, uh, Tim Morrison. It's Tim Morrison. So you, you say this nightclub doesn't exist. Peter Stuyvesant. It's a suspicion. Cannibals. Thumbs up. Who is that ravishing girl in the middle? She's adorable. <laughs> I must marry her. In my heart of hearts, I'm a sexual clam. What? In the heart of a heart, he says in front of a child. Do you want me or do you want my daughter? Interesting choice, man. Yeah, this is Michael Musso brought up. Jennifer Jones. I was born poor, but I have class. Lou Rawls is in another world 